Yeah, um, so I have a hand here from the 10-10 game at Parks Casino in uh, Philadelphia. Awesome. Our uh, mod extraordinaire, Michael G., plays at Park. We seem to get a lot of calls from Parks in Philadelphia. Or the, the love. A lot of games there. Yeah. A lot of games there. Yep. Yeah. 10-10 at Parks, okay. Yep. Okay, and then uh, at this moment in time, we were playing seven-handed. It's normally an eight-handed game. Okay. And uh, I had 3K and uh, – or. Sorry, hero had 3K and the villain has him covered. So, seven handed, 3K. By the way, did some. Yeah, which, which but, is the buy in? I, I just, I think that, you know, Michael G., our moderator extraordinaire, I think nuked the guy, but I think that some jackass in the live chat said, put your mask on, Bart. <laughs> guys are so stupid so, <laughs> by the way did you see my tweet about austin property taxes yesterday texas the no. most socialist state in the country with uh property tax uh recapture but uh oh, anyways man. no politics on the show okay so 10 10 <laughs> uh parks casino in philadelphia 70 ended 3k effective okay yeah and uh so hero has uh King of Hearts, uh, Queen of Clubs, and raises the thirty dollars in the low jack. All right, so you open two thirty. King of Hearts, King uh, Queen of Spades, is that right? Uh, clubs, club. Okay, of clubs. Okay, so is that about the standard open size? Yeah, I usually see about thirty to forty. Half the people doing thirty, half doing okay. forty. Okay, cool. And uh, so the small blind now three bets to one ten. By the way, small uh, low jack seven handed is that like pretty much like almost like plus one if we're just getting on yeah, board with the yeah, same thing. You, okay. You want to look okay. At it. Yeah. And you said the cutoff. I'm sorry. Uh, it was the small blind three bets to one ten? Small blind three bets to one ten. Okay. And uh, hero calls. Well, so. Again, preflop police type of stuff. Just as a, I'm not going to go through the whole the entire thing, but if we were to take a look at this from a preflop perspective of like looking this, I mean, I know it's seven handed, right? Um, by the way, this is not as off the rails as nine ten off, but you know, from a plus one open standpoint here, if you take a look and say, you know, this guy used like say like a four x sizing, and just let's just say for the sake of argument that that would equate to you defending 50% of the hands that you open with from like a plus one seven handed is King queen off in that top 50% would you say? Um, no, but it, it, I honestly came down to player dynamics. Mm -hmm. Like the particular player I was playing against, I mean, has woken up with some crazy, crazy stuff, three uh -huh. betting, a lot of different things. So, it was more of uh, I wouldn't have defended it against most, but in this particular situation, to play a pot in position against that player, I, I, I will take it. Uh, by the way, would King Queen off be in the top fifty percent of hands that you would open from on the button? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. So I think you have a slam dunk call on the button, right? Against right, a small. Right. So this, against I think. Anyone, yeah. Right. I think that this is a. Uh, you know, a little bit on the lighter side. And then if you had somebody call behind you, it's a slam dunk fold. Maybe throw in some right, format right. bluffs once in a while, but um, I think it's a slam dunk fold. So, all right. So a little bit Fair light, enough. a little bit light on the defense. All right. So it looks like it's 225 to the flop. Okay. Yeah, about 230. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and the flop is uh, king of diamonds, six of clubs, mm -hmm. uh, deuce of clubs. Okay. So you get top pair, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, the villain starts with a check. Uh, okay, so V1 checks. By the way, some people chiming in that king-queen should be four bet here, heads up, versus just called. I, I don't... I'm not. I don't know if I can get on board with that. If if you if what the caller here, who is um, Anthony Tony, I don't know if you go by that, but uh, either or. I think you're saying Tony that like the guy's super wide, right? Yeah. So no, I, don't, I don't think there's any merit to four bet this against him. Is there merit to just sort of take it like kind of four bet bluffing and that he might three bet fold? I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know because again, then he's only going to call me with. Uh, better, I think. Even, even this particular player, I think he three bets pretty wide, but when he gets caught speeding, he kind of slows down. Okay, I mean, I just wanted to throw it out, th throw it yeah, out there enough. at you. So, so okay, so he checks, right? Right. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I kind of took that as the green light. You know, again, he could have 
so many different things here. So I bet 110. So Hero bets 110. I might just ref- uh, again, like this is a spot where I might have a reflex to go maybe a little bit even smaller than that, or I guess you could say even larger, but larger is a little bit more complicated because you got to figure out which hands you're going to go, you know, larger with, but you always want to call. Now, sometimes though, live kind of merges and you get this in-between sizing, this half sizing that's not really th- theoretical, really reflected, but it's kind of the same range that you get called for the smaller sizing. So I can get on board with that. Um, some people in the live chat saying check back. I, I think that this is a different type of board than if the board came out like, for example, King Jack, you know, eight with a two flush or something like that, where you will see some people play some better hands like Ace King or like aces sometimes for a check. I don't I think the caller has the best hand here a lot when it when it gets to this action, right? I assume you thought you had the best hand here, Tony. Yeah, I was pretty positive. I mean that he would call me at least one time with pocket fives, pocket sevens, six, seven, club draw. Like I, I was pretty sure I was far out in front. Yeah. Yeah, I mean my, my reflexive sort of idea was to bet seventy five or eighty. But okay, so you want a little bit larger to one ten, okay. Yep, and uh, he thinks for about a minute or so and calls. So, small blind calls. So, now we're at 450. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so the turn is the jack of spades, and just to be clear, I think this is where I kind of made a mistake, but so the turn is the jack of spades. He continues with the check once again, and uh, I decided to bet 250. So, big blind checks, and hero that's 250. It, I mean, you are making it, Tony, sound like that this guy obviously is very, very wide. Like yeah, a very, I mean, very he, wide player. Right. Very. Yeah, now, very, the, very. The interesting thing here is I'm trying to think of about the types of hands that, you know, you have beat that continue, obviously, to a flop call and here a turn call. You know, you start to think about like Queen's. And and some smaller pairs, but the question now is pairs below jacks. Are they calling here on turn? I'm trying to think of anything else that might be non paired here, like ace queen with the ace of clubs, something like that. Even ace queen with the ace of clubs, though, to this turn. I mean, picks up a gut shot and overcard. It's a inter- uh, gut shot here um, to the two thirds sizing. I mean, that's just a couple of combos. And then possibly maybe some like king X that's sometimes checked if he does take it this way. I don't, uh, on the jack turn, I still might want to take a little bit of a block sizing here of maybe like, and this is very, very subtle. I still might, I'm, I might go 150 to 175 here. Uh, and this is one where you might play a little bit backwards where if you had, you know, a draw or something like that, if you had like a queen, 10 of clubs or an ace, queen of clubs, you could play this a little bit on balance where you want to get the full equity. Um, that's just kind of my thoughts to how would I, how would I approach so, so you, this. you definitely think I should st- I should still be betting here then, just a smaller sizing. I think that I probably would continue to bet here. I think that there is merit to checking back. The argument for sometimes checking back here is is that it's a little bit of a gamble, right? So you can check back and then um, try to make up across a clean river for value. You know what I'm saying? Like here too. Um, but I do see people chicken out a lot. And then, and, and again, to play sort of devil's advocate with checking back on the flip side is um, as long as you can keep your sizing in check, there are a lot of times like you get the value earlier on uh, in the hand. That's usually applicable to the flop. He, this one's kind of close. I mean, I can sometimes see checking back, but I would definitely bet the river. It's a two street type of situation right, when right. you go 250 here if he calls again now what if you get like a deuce or a three river are you going for three streets now there might be some guys that i might go for three streets but it's kind of like a setup for three streets yeah i mean if he if he continued to play the hand super passively i'm i'm probably putting a value bet on on a, yeah, like a clean deuce clean three river yeah but uh this is where the hand gets a little strange so now the villain uh he thinks a little bit and decides to raise the 700 wow so big blind raises to 700. Small blind, but... Yeah. Oh, excuse me, small blind raises to 700. I mean, obviously, yeah. though, what's the hand that jumps out at us here? Uh, jack, 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 probably. jack, jack, right? Yeah. Jack, jack. Yeah. 
Um, and that's what in the moment I was like, you know, that's what I I thought, but. Um, I felt like my hand was a little too strong at that moment to fold, so I called. Well, I mean, anytime you block, you know, any of these sets. Now, the, you guys, I'm sure most of you, I'm sure when you watch me on Hustler, you saw that hand with um, Zio and Nick in the very beginning. This was from March 31st because I just did a video on it where Nick, who's definitely been on just a killer run for some reason like he four bet pre-flop with king queen of spades against zio's three bet zio ended up having king king and then the board came king high and zio took this just crazy line of leading into a four bet pot with top set for like one tenth the pot yeah very small yeah he went bet bet all in and i was actually honest with nick i would have a very hard time folding that hand with a king in it if i were nick I'd almost be sick to my stomach with aces more so than king-queen because just the way that the hand went down, I don't think Zio ever had aces or ace-king as played in that manner. So when Nick has king-queen, Zio's representing kings, right? So you want to have a king. It just happened to be that Zio had king-king, right? There's four kings in the deck. Um, So there's four kings in the deck here, but I mean, what screams out here at me is Jack-Jack. You know, you look at this situation, it's a check raise in a three bet pot on the turn. It's a very, very under bluffed scenario. I mean, what bluffs do you think that your opponent has here? Because don't you think that a lot of front door club draws are starting a bet here? Yeah. And I mean, the, the other thing to note too, is I have the queen of clubs. So like your ace queens and queen 10 of clubs that like float and, or, or, you know, and then pick up a lot more equity here on this, or, well, you know, some more equity on the turn here, uh, I block. So yeah, well, that's true. Like the combo, I I yeah. just think, but but I mean, what did you think that he had here? I, I, I don't know. I I, str- I Jack Jack <laughs> oh, Jack Jack right. was like the only thing, but like, you know, I honestly thought he could have just been spazzing out with a variety of things because some of the things that I had seen in the previous few hours that he had showed down. I mean, he could have he he could have been doing it with like somehow floated. Uh, queen 10 of diamonds with the backdoor diamonds picked up the open ender and just felt like I wasn't that strong. I mean, that, like he I literally mean, could have did something like that. I mean, obviously this is sort of, you know, an out to left field type of player, but I will say it, yeah. w- it does bring up something, Tony, where like, if you are playing against a player like this, though, it's good to block the strong hands, right? Like in the sense right. of it's nice that you have a king here uh, because then he doesn't have pocket Kings. It would be nice if you had a Jack, not that yeah. you, mean, you know what I mean, like not that you would necessarily play queen jack of clubs like this because you'd probably check back turn. Um, right. But um, I mean, it sounds to me like you're making a pretty sort of you're deviating here with a call versus normally like against the rest of the player pool. Yeah, no, I I agree. All right, so fourteen hundred, so the pot's eighteen fifty now to the river, right? Yeah, and the river is one of those blanks we talked about, so three of hearts. Mm-hmm. And uh, the small blind just, he kind of completely just stops, just think thinks completely for a little while, for about two, three minutes, and then goes all in. Uh, for I had about 20, 80 effective. So about a pot size bet. Yep, about a pot size bet. Now again, for everybody watching this one, we probably will make this a YouTube video. I'm sure like it's a decent you know, hand, even though there's some weird things going on. I think that this does bring up something that I will demonstrate. Now, if you can suspend belief for a second, because it sounds to me like Tony is saying that this guy is sort of all over the place, but there are certain situations here where you could actually call the check raise on the turn like you did and actually fold the river. Now, people might be like, how could you possibly fold? Like it's a brick. Now, yeah. Okay. Like maybe four, forget about four or five. Let's just say that's on his range. Like, how can you call the turn and fold the river? Like nothing's changed. And my, you know, I, I've been saying this for many, many years. I bring it, it seems like I bring it up a lot where the bet in itself is change in the sense that there has to be some check raise give ups. And the fact that you have called the preflop raisers check raise on the turn in a three bet pot shows immense strength. So you should have some some call folds too as well. Like the fact that you have called his check raise and then he's blasted all in again, I think it it just, he can't be bluffing with 100% of what he was check raising his bluffs with on the turn. 
um, whether it's a theoretical or a reality, but, you know, however you want to look at it. Now, it sounds to me like this guy's out, out to left field, so maybe if he's clicking mega buttons, you call, but it it brings up that point, though, that you can fold on a later street when the draw misses, but the change in the hand is just the bet in itself. So what did you end up doing? <laughs> I don't know. If yeah, I mean, I mean, I folded, but yeah. Oh, you I mean, did fold? To your point. Really? Because yeah, I, yeah, I would have yeah. thought oh, that yeah. you would have called, though, because against this player. Type. No. Well, again, it was kind of like his his particular river action. Like, I wasn't buying his story completely on the turn, but the river, like, I mean, I just, I just couldn't find, even him, I just couldn't find, like, what hand he plays in that way. I mean, I was like 100% sure he had Jack Jack. I don't know, but, you know, that's just, I wasn't sure on the turn, but on the river, I just, and like you said, there are some maybe call, check, raise, folds there that, you know, the board didn't change, but. By the way, Tony, what would be the best hand for you to have here to play the turn as a call, call? Do you think? To play the turn as a call, call. Yeah, meaning Uh... like you call the check, raise, and you're calling the river pretty much no matter what. What do you think the best hand that you could have here would be? I mean, I guess King Jack. Yeah, King Jack. Like, I'd almost rather have King Jack. Both of his sets. Yeah, yeah I'd almost rather have King Jack here than 6-6. Six, six. Especially if he's yeah, not right, going to play right. King Jack this way. So, I mean, that's kind of a natural one to have. But, no, it just kind of sounded to me like it's a little bit, from afar, it, sounds a li- it seems to me to be a little bit illogical if you're going with the deviation of calling turn when you can't, because the guy's out to left field, but but then folding the river unless yeah. you're going to just say that, well, yeah, but this is a special because nobody puts this type of money in, but that's a pretty far big deviation. No, you no, know? this guy definitely puts that kind of money in, but no, I, I don't know. I just, there was something about, about the way that he like the, the amount of time that he took and the, you know, just the way that he acted in those last couple minutes that, you know, again, I mean, I guess theoretically I was way off and everything, but that's just what I thought. So did you ever find out what he had? Never did. <laughs> well, interesting hand. Never did. Thank you very much for the call. Interesting. Uh, yeah, again, like you. I said, um, that stuff comes out, and I always point to uh, no limit deuce. As somebody in the live chat says, <laughs> I, I always sit, talk about this. No limit deuce. Uh, 